in yin, your edge is where you can stretch and still relax. So that is the goal. And so you'll find that your edge changes in each pose and your edge will be different today than it will be next week. And so you just have to listen to your body and I'll give as many cues as I can to help you um, get your body to relax. And I'll ask you all to experiment because that's the most fun part. You get to learn your body in a different way. And that's what really excites me. So anyway, almost to the minute, get up. <laughs> Okay, so everybody has a block. Have a block. So the balance part is something that this class um, requested. Oh, maybe six months into um, the when I first started teaching, so that's why I added it. But anyway, to start. We always start with Tadasana or mountain pose. So get your feet properly aligned. Your feet should be hip width apart. And for hip width, you want to be able to put your two fists together and then get your two fists to go in between the arches of your feet. Your hips aren't that narrow. I hate to say. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but what happens is if your if your feet are together, then your muscles in your hips kind of bind up and they can't work as independent as they need to. So anyway, from here, um, try to get your second toe pointed straight ahead, um, or maybe the outside of your of your foot and everybody's bones are different. And so that's something to remember because, um, you know, with different bone structures, different people can do different things. So anyway, from here, stand up straight, isometrically drag your feet toward each other so that you can feel the muscles in your legs really beginning to um, feel the, the strength. From here, take your upper, you know what? Everybody has blocks, grab a block. Okay. So come back into to Dasna, but you want to have your block, the narrow way and the short way, the long direction is front to back, and then put it up between your thighs, so high up that you'll have to take the block home. <laughs> okay, now stand up straight. Draw your legs, your feet together and see it's a little harder to do. But now take your upper inner thighs and roll them towards the back like you're gonna shoot the block out the back side. And then take your tailbone and tuck it under tilting your pelvis back. And by doing that, you're getting that nice little lumbar arch where it's supposed to be. From here, lift your sternum and then take the crown of your head, which is the back part right over your spine, up to the ceiling, tuck your chin in a little bit, gaze off at the horizon, Take your shoulders up towards your ears, roll them towards the back, get your shoulder blades to kiss, and then just let your shoulder blades float down your back. Now note how your hands are. Maybe your palms come forward. Maybe your palms are flat on your hips. Doesn't matter. Every bone has a sweep in it. And from here, just relax all those muscles, but maintain the position. Just relax your shoulders. 
You're not trying to bring your shoulders up. You're trying to get your shoulder blades down. Find a point on the floor that's not moving. And then begin to bring your weight into your left foot. Come up onto your right toes. And then just lift that foot up. Notice all the movement in your left ankle. Now for balance, you can always go up against the wall. And then come back down, get rid of that silly block. Okay, come back into the dachshund. I always like to do the same motion every time so that all it takes is about a half a second to get my alignment. So the more you do it, even at Publix when you're waiting online, this is a great way to maintain your balance, maintain your posture, bring the weight into your right foot. Begin to lift that left foot up a little bit. A little bit more and more, and maybe you can grab onto that knee with both hands, maybe not. Draw that knee up and into your chest. And remember, this is practice. The balance event in the Olympics isn't until next week. And straighten your spine. That will help you get your balance a little bit easier. And then release. Step that up. Back to Tadasana. Weight into your left foot. And then bring that right knee up. Grab onto it. And see if you can get that knee all the way up. Wherever all the way up is for you. you. Don't watch anybody else, particularly don't watch me. I'm not particularly stable today. Well, and then release. Now, the three most important things about balance are strength flexibility, and practice. So come back into Tadasana. We're going to do a couple of poses that in Hatha would be called Utkatasana, chair pose. So on an inhale, just drop your seat. You don't have to come down very far. And then just take your hands to your quads, just so that you can feel your quads. Those are the muscles on the top of your legs, top of your thighs. They're called quads because you have four of them. And then slowly bring the weight into your left foot. And you, if you have to raise up a little bit, that's okay. But try to lift your right foot up a little bit. And then rise all the way up. Put that right foot down. Step that out. Back to Tadasana. And then on the inhale, lower your seat. This side may be radically different. That's okay. And then bring the weight into your right foot. Lift the left foot up. And find that point on the floor that you can watch. I am always amazed by 
all the micro movements that are being made by my leg without my brain's intervention. That's all done by your fascia. Your fascia has about six times more nerves than your muscles. And they communicate with each other. And then with your left foot still up, just raise all the way back up. And then step that down, step that up. Okay, last week we talked about walking. And so walk to the back of your mat. And then take a couple of steps forward. And on the second step, just bring that foot, back foot up so that you're on your right foot or your left foot, doesn't matter. Now the muscle that is pulling your left leg, your lifted leg forward is your rectus femoris which ties into your pelvis, goes down, naturally ties into the top of your patella tendon. So it's really attached to your tibia. One of the few muscles that bridges two bones. And then your gluteus medius works to pull that leg back and if you can bring your hand to your left glute and stick your left foot out, back rather, you can feel that tighten up. And then release. Step that up. Back to Tadasana. Take a step and then lift that left foot up. Now these are some of the same muscles that we're going to be addressing in the yin class. So there is a method in my madness. So if you try to bring that right knee up, you're using that rectus femoris. And then bring that muscle behind. Bring that foot behind and you can feel your glutes really working hard and lifting that leg. And bring that forward, step it down. Okay, so we're almost there, not enough time to do a couple of other things. Um, we're going to start our class and Priscilla's, Priscilla forgot to, to ask me and um, she was going to chide me. We're going to start in yoga squat. So I'm going to recommend that um, I'm not going to recommend, I'm going to demand that you use at least the block. Um, I have two more blocks, so if anyone has one and wants a second block, it will be a little bit more stable, or it can be gray and just use the one. Okay, you're gray. Okay, good for you. If you fall, that's fine. Okay, so um, in order to get to yoga squat, and the reason why we have blocks is that, sure, you can do a yoga squat. Doing it for five minutes is going to be pretty devastating. But um, I want your muscles to relax. So the easy way to get there. Now, this is not the easy. It's easy for me because I do this quite a bit. But you can get down on your block any way that you need to. But if you bring your feet out wide, your heels maybe four inches in front of the, the block, maybe you can just come down. 
and look and hope that you <laughs> land on your block. And if that doesn't work for you, just get down on your knees. This is the way I did it the first time, then the second, then the third. Sit on the block with the blocks, and then bring your knees up and walk your feet outward. And the block has three different dimensions, so you can do anything that you need. From here, bring your elbows in between your thighs. And maybe bring your palms together, although that's not crucial. And then use your palms or use your arms to push your knees outward, bring your thighs outward. From here, allow your eyes to close. Take a deep cleansing breath into your nose and exhale it out through your nose. Take another cleansing breath into your nose. Breathe it out through your nose. And let your breath come to its own natural rhythm in and out through your nose. Now breathing through your nose is so important because it cleans the air coming in. It moistens it. And it brings it up to the temperature that you need for it to get into your lungs at the optimum, in the optimum condition. Observe your breath. Maybe you can feel the air coming in through your nostrils, swirling around in your nasal cavities and the sinuses. And as it runs down the back of your throat, notice where that air goes once it hits your lungs. You're breathing all the way down into your belly. Breathe, breathing into your upper lungs. Or into your ribs. It doesn't matter. This is the breath that's kept you healthy. Now notice your arms. Are you still pushing out hard on those thighs? Just without moving the position, just relax your arms. Maybe your shoulder blades can sink down a little bit more, but just let gravity take them. You don't have to push them down physically. You may find that your spine straightens up, your spine gets longer and straighter. This is a groin opener. It's a back straightener. Experiment, maybe try to move the person behind you and see if you can tilt your pelvis forward. And then maybe tilt, tuck your tailbone under and see if that makes anything different. Maybe that will help you straighten up your shoulders, bring the crown of your head up a little bit higher. But be careful not to re-engage your upper body to push those knees away from each other. Begin to deepen your breath. And your next inhale, open up your eyes. Get out of this, you can 
walk your feet forward or backward, whichever works for you. Move the blocks carefully. And then come into a table pose. On your hands and knees. In table pose, you have your wrist creases directly beneath your shoulders. You have your knees directly beneath your hips. And on an inhale, your belly drops, your chest comes forward, your sit bones lift and separate. And on an exhale, round your spine, tuck your tailbone under, and last, your chin comes towards your chest. We do a few inhales into cow and exhales into cat. Notice the stress that it built up in your sacrum or your lower back. See how this delivers more fluid to those bones and those joints. It makes us a little more comfortable. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, what I'd like you to do is walk your hands and knees over to the left side of the <coughs> We're going to do something a little different this time, but bring your knees way off to the left. And then inhale back to center and bring your knees, or not knees, I'm sorry, hips off to the right. Back to center, your hips off to the left again. To the right. Getting some extra movement in your hip sockets to the left. And this time, as you come over to the right, lower your hip, right hip all the way down onto the mat so that your thighs are parallel to the front of your mat, and then turn towards the front of your mat. Try to get up kind of high and feel the stretch you're getting along both sides of your ribs. Now, if anyone has had chest surgery and would like to do a spinal twist on your back, go right ahead. But for the rest of us, just begin to walk your hands forward. Make sure that you're fully on your mat. So walk forward, bringing your chest down. And as you come down, maybe your arms can come off into T. Maybe your, your eyes can be looking towards your right arm. Maybe not, it's okay. You can use a block underneath your collarbones or a towel. I'd like a few wraps of a towel, gives my head just enough space above the floor to look off to the right. Feel the stretch in your chest. You can probably feel this in your pecs. Stretching all the way from your left hip to your right shoulder. Soften your lower belly. Soften your upper arms. And if there's a body part that's really objecting, back up. Remember the goal is to soften your muscles. The magic doesn't happen 
if your muscles are gripping the entire time. And sometimes, sometimes you feel where your muscles are just fighting you. And then other times you'll just jump into a pose and then change. Show compassion to your own body and make the adjustments that your body needs. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, walk your hands back next to your chest. Push the floor away, lifting your chest up. And come back up into table. And do a few more cat cows. Toenail should be on the mat. By flexing your spine forwards and backwards, you're bringing relief from the twist. And the next time you come to center pause, this next pose that we're going to do, I'm sorry, Rita's not here this week. Um, she was the one who said, gee, and the poses that I don't like, don't do saddle. Well, we're going to saddle. <laughs> so anyway, for saddle, those of you in Hatha, it's hero's pose. So you can just sit back on your knees. At least that's one version. Now we're going to do saddle on the right. So you can come over onto your right hip and bring your left leg out in front. So you can use a block or a towel underneath your hips. And maybe you can bring that right heel outside of your hip. This will induce an inward rotation of your femur. From here, bring your hands behind your hips. Your left leg can be straight and bent, or you can do full saddle on both sides. It doesn't really matter. But from here, tuck your tailbone under, tilting your pelvis. This pose is great for your sacrum itself. What you're doing when you tuck your tailbone under is you're flexing that sacroiliac joint, your sacrum joint to your ilium, which is your pelvis. And if this is good, you can stay here. Your gaze can be straight here, it can be up. If you wish, you can even come back further. I'm not going to be here more than 20 minutes more. <laughs> but feel the stretch in your right quads. Why do you like this? You can help your quads relax just by touching. So if your hand can reach, just stroke your quads to see how they're doing. And by touching, you'll be able to give them permission to relax so that they're not at the ready to get you out of danger. That's why your muscles that's why your muscles are always ready to go. And on an inhale, come back up. Lean onto that left hip. Bring that right foot out in front. 
Turn your hands behind your hips. And put your footprints on the mat. From here, put on a windshield wiper. The one side to the other. Do that slowly and observe. Observe your hips. Observe your quads. The next pose that we're going to do is saddle. I'm sorry, it's not saddle, swan. So if you have a knee issue and you want to do a reclining swan, you can just go back onto your back right now. I'll give some cues to that in a minute. But otherwise, you can just sit up straight and bend your right knee so that your right shin is parallelish to the front of the mat, although you'll be able to move that more. And come onto your right hip again and bring your left knee behind your right heel. This is called 99, your deer pose. And this is the pose that um, would literally break off my, my leg. So I'm going to extend this leg back, all the way to the back, put my toenails down into a conventional swan. For Hatha, this is called pigeon. But to begin, just Raise your chest up. Use your hands to push your chest backward. You're trying to get more weight into your right hip. And that right hip is trying to reach the ground. And if you're having real difficulty, you can always tuck a block underneath that right hip. And if you've never tried that before, tuck one under. And you'll find that your glutes release immediately. It's almost like the magic. And when you're ready, if you're ready, you can walk your hands forward, bringing your chest down towards the mat. And be aware that your right knee is not supposed to have any sensation at all. And if it does, bring your heel closer to your body center line. You can use a block underneath your sternum or underneath your collarbones. Now this pose targets your glutes your right side glutes, and your right hip side. And maybe if you can reach around and touch your right glute, as I was um, told by my teacher trainer, um, it's been clinically proven that if your eyes are closed, nobody can see you. So you can feel your glutes with Impunity. But by moving that right knee farther to the right or farther towards the middle of your body, you can direct where you feel this. You can go to a different part of your glutes rather than your gluteus maximus. Maybe you can target your gluteus medius. Just relax. Soften into the pose. And if your body softens enough, maybe you want to Come down a little more. Only you know what's going on inside your body.
to breathe into the sensations. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, walk your hands back next to your chest. Inhale, push your chest higher. Walk your hands back. Remove any props. And when you can breathe, Turn your right leg back to meet the left. Go ahead. You can remain in table, make big circles with your hips. Or if you wish, you can curl your toes under, lift your hips up and back into the hard place and dog. You can also lift one leg at a time, stretch it out. Your glutes are the largest muscles in your body. And on your exhale, lower back down. And do a couple more cat cows. Don't forget to tuck your tailbone under when you're in cow. I'm sorry, uh, when you're in cat, and then you reverse in cow. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, take your left arm out to the side. Hold your curl to the floor. And then on an inhale, raise that arm up. You're going to thread the needle. So on an exhale, thread the needle. The left arm comes behind the right wrist way out to the side, bringing your shoulder down onto the mat. Your cheek comes down. And your right hand is next to your face. Now there are lots of alternatives here. One of them is you can always straighten out that right leg coming up on your toes. Another is you can straighten out that right arm, come up onto your fingertips like a spider, out to the side, and then slowly crab walk your hand towards the front of the room, gradually opening up that right shoulder. It just goes so far as feels good. You may feel or hear some creaking in your joint. It's only because your ear is so close in this pose that you hear it. Normally you don't. The tiny little snap, crackle, pops are your fascias that are adhered to one another because they haven't been moved enough today. And then if your arm is, has walked to the front, bring it back by your face. And then you turn your knee back down. 
And then on your next inhale, push the floor away, extract your arm, bring it out to the side and up. Come back into the table, do a couple more cat cows. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, we're going down onto, onto your belly. So walk your knees back, walk your arms forward, come down onto your elbows. Bring your palms flat on the floor out in front of you, your elbows underneath your shoulders. Your legs can be close together or slightly parted. Your gaze should be between your hands. Lift your chest high. Your elbow should be directly below your shoulders so that this is not a real challenging pose to be in yet. And now your toenails should be down on the floor. And on an inhale, push your toenails down. That will lift your knees, lift your chest, and then isometrically drag your elbows towards your hips. Those are all the muscles that you're going to target for softening. So on an exhale, soften the backs of your knees, your calves, your thighs, Maybe you can feel a wave of relaxation coming up through your glutes to your lower back, in your belly. You can feel a little bit more of the mat slowly making contact. And then finally, just allow your head to bow forward using your 14 pound head is an anchor, stretching your cervical spine. But to be sure that you're not keeping any tension in your head, maybe rock your head from left to right. Make a little circle on the mat with your nose. And then on the next exhale, lower down, cross your forearms, use them as a pillow, turn your head to one side or another, and bring your favorite knee up towards your elbow. And going into a half frog, you're giving your spine just a little bit of a twist which is a great counter to the back bend it is doing. And then on an inhale, bring your left leg back to meet the right. Bring your palms next to your chest. Push the floor away, come up into table. Do a couple cat cows. And the next time you come to center pause, look between your legs. If you can see your feet, move them off to the side so they, they're invisible. Then come up onto your toes. So curl your toes under. So the pads of your toes are on the ground. This is going to be a toe stretch. So from here, walk your hands back and bring more weight into your toes. Now, use your judgment. You don't want to break your toes off. 
Maybe you can bring your knees back a sixteenth of an inch. The reason to get your feet out is to get a little bit more flex on your pinky toes. If your feet were right together, your big toe would get the entire amount of stress and tension. This is great for your plantar fascia. You can always reach behind and feel the soles of your feet. That fascia is really the only thing on the bottom of your foot other than your bursa. And then come forward, release your toes, bring your toes down, maybe your toenails down, maybe you want to tap your toes a little bit. And then walk your hands and knees over to the left side of your mat. Yeah, yeah the right side of your <laughs> Okay, from here, bring your left hip down onto the mat. Coming into the chest down spinal twist. And again, if, if you want to do this on your back, go right ahead. And then look forward and walk your hands forward. Coming all the way down. And bring your arms out in the teeth. Breathing out towards the left. And breathe. Soften your lower abdomen. Soften your glutes. Soften your thighs. Feel that stretch from your right hip to your left shoulder. Doing the twist in this pose uses your weight a little bit more of a gravity. To intensify. From here, if you'd like to come up onto your four fingers, spider fingers, and then walk your hand towards the front of your neck and fan again, just to see what that's like. You may not go very far because it looks pretty intense. There's a lot more weight on that shoulder. When you do get some intensity, breathe into that sensation. And then just relax down. Let your body soften. And as your body softens, that tension that's in your fascia is telling your body that it needs some help. And that will attract some stem cells, those cells that you are still creating every day in your body. It will attract them to come and build more cells, to elongate existing cells. 
and eventually you'll get more space inside your body so that your muscles have more space to move. And that will bring you more mobility. But it's not a fast process. Change in yin is measured in the dimension of time. Soften that right shoulder, maybe that arm can come all the way down onto the mat, maybe not. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, begin to bring the hands next to your chest. Push the floor away, lifting up, coming back into the table. Notice how different your shoulders feel. And the next time you come to center, pause. We're back to saddle on the other leg. This is where I am doing center. So you can come back onto your heels and then come over onto your left hip, bring your right leg out in front. Or if you want to do a full saddle, And leave both legs back. You can be on the block and don't have any expectation that this side will be the same as the other. The right foot can be facing up towards the ceiling. You can bend that knee if that works for you. You can even walk that foot out to the side. You'll find all kinds of interesting sensations. And as long as they're good, it's good for you. So from here, bring your hands behind your body. Tuck your tailbone under. Maybe you can feel your psoas and your iliacus beginning to stretch a little bit across the front of your pelvis. Your left foot is getting a pretty good ankle stretch. Begin to deepen your breath. And then inhale, rise all the way back up. Roll over onto your right hip, free up that left foot, coming towards the front of your mat. Bring your hands behind your hips. Bring your footprints on the mat. Maybe this time you want them wider apart or closer together. It's up to you, and then windshield wiper again. And if you've never done it with 
repeat in a different position. Try it. Reminds me of life cereal. Try it. I like it. <laughs> the next time we come to center, pause. Sit all the way up. We're back to saddle. Yeah. So get whatever props you need. Roll on to your, well, bend your left knee, bringing your ankle roughly parallel. And you know by now that it doesn't have to remain that way. You can bring your right knee behind that left heel for deer pose. And you can fold forward. It all depends on the way your fingers are set in your hip sockets. You can come all the way into the conventional swan. Lift high, walk that right leg back, dropping your hips down. And also remember you can move that left knee to the left or to the right. And you can move the left heel towards the center of your body. If you have sensations in that left knee. And whenever you're ready, if you're ready, you can walk your hands forward, come down onto your elbows, onto a block. I find that my body takes a while to soften here. So I come down on a, the six inch version of the block underneath my sternum. And then when my hips start to soften, I can change that to the four inch dimension. And then sometimes even come all the way down onto my chest, but not always. Every day is different. Observe your body without trying to interfere. But see if you can catch your body in the actual relaxation moment. When one muscle begins to relax and the adjacent muscle then begins to follow. Now your arms don't have to be out in front. You're more comfortable next to your body. Or up to the side in T. Do what's best for your body.
Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, bring your arms back next to the chest. Inhale, rise up, walk your hands back until you can release that leg. You can stay in table, or come up into down dog. It really depends on you. And if you decide to go into dog, remember, if you have tight hamstrings, just keep your feet way up to the edges. And then on your next exhale, lower your knees. Couple quick cat cows. And the next time you come to center pause, lift your right arm out to the side and lift it up. I'm going to do a thread the needle. So exhale, thread the needle, lift. Right hand behind the left wrist, way out to the left side. Coming down onto your shoulder, onto your cheek. Feel this twist from your left shoulder to your right hip. <coughs> if you'd like to straighten out that left leg again, that's it. You walk that left arm out to the side and then towards the front of the mat. Or you can bring that arm behind your back. And reach for the top of your right thigh. You can enjoy the pose. And focus on softening. Soften your lower abdomen. Soften your inner thighs. Your glutes. Soften your shoulder blades. Maybe they will just slip down towards your Begin to deepen your breath. And the next inhale, bring your left hand back next to your face. Carefully lower down your left knee. Push your left hand into the mat. Retrieve your right arm out and up. And come back into the table. A couple of quick cat cows. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, 
Come down onto your favorite hip. Swing your feet around to the front of the mat. One last pose before Shavasana. And this is going to be Caterpillar, which for you Hatha folks it is Dandasana. And I'm going to recommend using a block. You put the block underneath your sit bones. So that you're sitting right on the very edge. You can actually tip that block so it's coming up. You'll feel like you're going to slide off, but you won't. But your pelvis will tilt forward, which is what you want to do in a forward fold. Now, this is another good time to bring your feet about hip width apart. Inhale your spine tall, Take your chin in just a little bit. On the next heel, walk your hands on the outsides of your legs, drawing your collarbones towards your toes, coming forward until your body tells you to pause. And when that happens, allow your spine to round in your head just to fall forward. Now, if you have an urge to pull on your legs, please resist that urge. That would be my Ashtanga class. But you can always bring your hands up on top of your shins with your palms facing the sky. Let your shoulder blades relax. But then just flow with gravity. Breathe into the backs of your legs, the backs of your knees. This pose focuses on your hamstrings and also on your spine. And it's particularly good for your sacrum. So this pose along with saddle are the best two poses if you have issues with your sacroiliac joint. Soften your neck. Listen carefully. On your next inhale, come up about halfway. Push your collarbones a little bit farther towards your toes. And then exhale, release, come all the way back down. Let everything go. Let your feet fall wherever they want. Soften your triceps. Breathe into your kidneys.
begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, begin to walk your hands back towards your hips, raising your chest. Carefully remove any blocks you might have. Bring your hands behind your hips, and your footprints onto the mat. Know how your hips feel right this second, and then. Why don't you wipe her the knees from one side to the other? And the next time you come to center, pause. And down on your elbows. And all the way down on your back. Put your heels towards the front of the room. Lift your hands up towards the ceiling. And let them float down towards the wall beyond your head. And push your heels as far away from your palms as you can get, feeling it stretch on the back side of your body. And then stretch from your manicure to your pedicure. And then return your arms back either by your side or out from your side at any comfortable location for you. You can move your legs to a more comfortable position. You can bend your knees, bring them together, or bring your soles together and let your knees splay out. Your eyes closed, take a deep cleansing breath into your nose. And exhale it out through your nose. Take another cleansing breath into your nose. Out through your nose. And take rest. I'll be coming around and adjusting some of you. I won't get to everyone. But if you do not want me to touch you, just wave me away when you hear my footprints.
Begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your space. Bring movement to your fingers and to your toes, to your wrists, and to your ankles. Gently roll your head from left to right. And when you're ready, Walk your footprints up towards your sit bones. Draw your knees into your chest and give yourself a big squeeze. And rock from left to right. Push your hips away. Lengthen your spine so that you can massage it all the way from shoulder and hip to shoulder and hip. And then the next time you come over, on your right side, pause there for a moment in fetal pose, using your arm as a pillow. And do a quick scan of your body to determine if you have any, any stress or tension that hasn't been addressed during the practice. So that you can address it later this week. When you're ready, use the strength of your left hand to rise up to a seated pose. Thank you for sharing your yoga practice with me this afternoon. Thank you for motivating me to teach more yoga. Thank you most of all for taking care of the health of your body, your mind, and your breath through the practice of yoga. Take the compassion and empathy that you practice every time you step on your mat with you everywhere you go and share it with your family, your friends, and those you might meet. Namaste. <laughs> My name is Clint, and this has been Yin Yoga. Thank you for coming.